guys, and welcome back to another episode of Supercross Showdown. The boys had a week off and we start this weekend in Foxborough, recapping the highlights from St. Louis. There wasn't much to recap in the 250 class. Uh, kitchen was... Let him cook! Let him cook now! Let him cook! On another level, as he has been the last two weeks, it's definitely his championship to lose now. We had Sushi with a solid night, showing some good form carrying over from the week before. Happy to see him finding his speed as he has had like really bad races. RJ didn't quite have the starts in the triple crown, except for one start, he did really well. Kitchen just held his gap and RJ couldn't bridge it any closer than um, three or three to five seconds, I can't really remember. And then Jordan had a okay night. He was pretty consistent throughout all three races. But with your 250 overall, we had Kitchen, Sushi and Jordan rounding out the podium. Moving on to the 450 class, that was on a whole nother level. We had lang drama happening in all three races. It was a pretty wild night of racing. Starting off with race one, we had Hunter with the lead, Oldenburg close second, he went down in the one rhythm section and took a bunch of riders down with him. I think he took Adam Cinturilla out, who's now retired, and I think Chase and Jed were involved. Hunter, while leading, uh, had Tomac on his heels, and he, I think he lost the front, and Tomac took the lead. Once Jet had got through the Oldenburg altercation, he was firing, carving his way through the field, made his way up to Kenny. He was coming to pass Kenny in one of the rhythms and something happened to Kenny's bike and he nearly had a gnarly crash, but he managed to save it. I think his radiator blew or something like that. But in the end, uh, Tomac, it was nice to see Tomac take the, the dub in race one. For race two, we had Justin taking the whole shot. He's definitely showing some promise in the 450 class. We had Jet in a close second and Tomac behind Jet, which was super exciting because we thought we were going to get the race we've all been waiting for. We had Webb catching a tough block at the finish line, which took him down. And then one of the most awkward things that I think we've ever seen is um, so Tomac couldn't catch Jet, but he, he was there the whole race. And I think Jet was just managing the gap the entire race. On the last lap, they had the chicken flag out, but at the same time, they had a red cross flag. And Jet came to cross the finish line and jump the finish line. And we all know you can't jump on a red cross flag. It's kind of awkward. Like it's really easy to make that mistake because you're so used to having the checkers and you jump and you celebrate your win and having the Red Cross flag out at the same time. I can imagine it's really hard to like pay attention because you watching the checkered flag wave and then the Red Cross flag is out at the same time. But Jed wasn't the only one that got caught out. There was a bunch of riders who got caught out. I think Anderson, Webb, maybe Plessinger. So Jed actually got docked his, his win and Tomac ended up winning that. So he was two for two coming into the third race, which is super exciting to see. So starting off with race three, Tomac came out with the whole shot, the crowd went wild, and then one of the gnarliest takeouts I've ever seen in my life. Um, you know it's a gnarly takeout when the other person just goes straight fetal position. I don't actually know what Justin was doing. I saw a meme where somebody was saying, yo, Justin says he's sorry, but a lot of Justin's takeouts look like the one he did to Jet. He sent Jet to the moon. It was so gnarly. The impact, you can literally see the impact that Jet took. And then the dude just went straight fetal position after that. We've had a solid ride in the last race, passing Chase into second and putting Monster Energy on the box for first and second. It was really sick to see Eli sweep the Triple Crown. We all know he's so good at Triple Crowns and he finally gets his first overall win of the season. I think there's been a number of times when he could have had his first overall win already. So a long overdue win for Tomac, but stoked to see the old dog on the top step of the box. And with that, our overall 450 podium was Tomac, Webb and Hunter coming in third for his first 450 podium of the season. 
Moving on to our predictions for this weekend, we're heading east. So we're gonna do our 250 East Riders prediction. It's a bit difficult making our predictions when the 250 East boys have had such a long break. But obviously Hayden's healed from his injury and I think he's gonna have some raw speed. So I'm gonna go with Hayden for first place. I'm gonna put Bial in a close second. And then rounding out the podium, I'm gonna go with Mackies. And then fourth and fifth is a bit of a difficult choice. Fourth, I'm gonna put Seth. And then my wild card, I'm gonna go, I'd like to see Dax. He's obviously been doing work with the boys at the farm. He does have Hayden as a teammate, so, and I mean, they are good mates. So I'd like to see him finish in the top five. And that's my 250 predictions. Don't forget to put your 250 predictions in the comments and have a chance at winning the Leah Talmud and goggles. Let's move on to the 450s. Right, moving on to our 450 predictions. I don't think Jet's gonna be the top spot as he has been the number one pick for most of these last weeks. I'm gonna go with Tomac. I think he's gonna have some confidence after the clean sweep at the Triple Crown. And maybe he's found what he's been missing. So Tomac's gonna to be my top pick. Also, I don't know how Jet's gonna be feeling after being sent to the moon. He might still be chilling there. He hasn't made his way back yet. I think uh, Cooper Webb's also gonna be dangerous. I think I'm gonna go with the same, the same top two from the Triple Crown. Eli and Webb. And then third, I'm gonna put Jet in third. We're just gonna to have to wait and see and see how he's feeling. He might come out like he didn't get sent to the moon and just wax everybody like he usually does, but fourth, I'm gonna go with Chase. And then rounding out my top five. This field is so stacked. It's so difficult to make these picks. I think fifth, I'm gonna go with Kenny. And that is my top five picks for this weekend in Foxborough. Don't forget to put your picks in the comments and hopefully we have a good night's racing and I'll check you guys next week. Peace out, Joe. Two, three, four, eight.